Hello everyone, CapM here, and in this video I want to get into Pfizer and BioNTech and the recent news that came out about their Ronin cocktail, also where the stocks can trend to in the near future. So guys, getting into it, we see that recent news did come out that Pfizer and BioNTech said that three doses of their Roni cocktail neutralize the new variant that we're seeing right now, according to results of an initial laboratory study. The data showed that a third dose of the cocktail increases neutralizing antibodies by 25-fold compared with two doses, strengthening the case and the need for booster shots. Now, we're seeing that the preliminary data suggests that three doses provide a similar level of antibodies as is observed after two doses against other variants that emerged before this variant. Now, two cocktail doses showed a 25-fold reduction in neutralizing antibodies against the new variant compared with other variants, which they said suggested that two doses may not be sufficient protection. Although two doses of the cocktail may still offer protection against severe disease caused by the new variant strain, it's clear from these preliminary data that protection is improved with a third dose of their cocktail, Pfizer CEO Albert Borla did say. Now, the companies added that the development of a new variant-specific cocktail was progressing and is expected to be available by March of 2022, if such an adaptation ends up being needed. Now, analysts are saying that the takeaways of Pfizer's update is underscoring their belief that the durability of Pfizer's cocktail sales for Roni does remain underappreciated by the street. And another study published late Tuesday suggested that Pfizer's Roni cocktail offers partial protection against the new variant. Now, the study from South Africa suggests that the variant does escape antibody immunity, but that considerable immunity is retained. And this is good for Pfizer. It's likely that lesser cocktail-induced protection against infection and disease would be the result. The study was small, including blood samples from just 12 participants, but it's the first scientific data into the efficacy of the cocktails against the new variant. So the loss of immune protection is robust, but not complete, head of research Alex Segal said, adding that a good booster would decrease the risk of infection, especially for more severe disease. So all these things put together, guys, it is telling us that Pfizer and BioNTech are still uncertain about certain cocktail measures that they need to take. We have to still see more preliminary data come out, and then we can make a considerable decision on whether new cocktails will be more effective, or if the current cocktails that we have right now in the market can be effective as well. So guys, drop a like if you've been enjoying the video so far, and let's get into the chart of BioNTech and Pfizer. And guys, heading into the chart of BioNTech, we were recently talking about this stock saying it was potentially being more bearish considering we're closing under the 20 and 50 exponential daily moving average on this day yesterday we did see a slight bounce which we did say was a possibility to see after such a huge decline but we're currently getting rejected by this area as well down around three percent from the high of the day right and down one and a half percent today currently where we're trading at now, a close under the 20 and 50 exponential daily moving average would be more bearish for BioNTech stock, right? So we really need to see what's going to happen with the efficacy of their cocktail variants. I do think that right now we are seeing a lot of people take profits from these cocktail makers, but it's important to keep in mind some certain levels on the daily time frame. Because guys, if we do start closing under this region on the daily time frame, we are going to be bearishly engulfing yesterday's previous trading action, right? Which would be a bearish engulfing candle. And really, it doesn't have it to happen today, but towards the weekly close, we can get a clearer picture. But again, if we do drop and close under this level, guys, I do think we lose that slight bounce that we could have had around that 20 and 50 exponential daily moving average and trend slightly down, right? So keep that area in mind. Now let's head into the weekly chart just to get a clearer picture. And heading into the weekly chart, guys, I think we do have a much clearer picture, right? Considering that this level over here that we were talking about on the daily time frame would signify we're closing under the 20 exponential weekly moving average and that this previous area of resistance that we did have on several weeks didn't act as a new level of support. So really a close under that $284 level, guys, I think would signify that we do trend further down. But we're going to have to see what happens towards the weekly close, right? And we do still have a price gap in this region for BioNTech stock, which we do know price gaps typically like to get filled. But that doesn't have to be the case for BioNTech either, right? We might see a further price decline. And I do think we can potentially be leaning more towards the bearish side with a close under this level. And what are we looking at overall for BioNTech stock chart? Well, we're trading in the middle of a range that doesn't really have an identified risk. Now, if you guys did want to take a trade currently, right, if you guys do think BioNTech stock is going to recover, you guys can potentially be risking around 5%, right? Because 
around that 5% mark, we would be closing under a recent wick that we did have, right, on Monday of this week, signifying a further bearish downtrend potentially heading into next week. But if we do start closing in this region and next week we do have a decent bounce, we can potentially close this price gap to take some profits, right? But I do think the better play is waiting for a retest back to the 50 exponential weekly moving average. As you guys can see, I've been labeling out, BioNTech has respected the 20 and 50 exponential weekly moving averages throughout its whole trading action, right? We respected it recently at this level over here as well. So I do think this area over here is a previous area of consolidation before our huge uptrend. Another area of support where we did retest back into, right? And we did get supported by the 50 exponential weekly moving average at this point as well. So that's kind of three areas of confidence we do see on biotech stock at this level. And I do think with investors waiting and being more patient, if we do see a further sell-off in these cocktail stocks, this can be an area where we do risk, let's say you start trading around the 50 exponential weekly moving average, around 10%, right, to see if we also have a decent sizable bounce to the midpoint of this region, which would be a 3 to 1 reward to risk ratio. And if this does become more bullish and we retested the top guys, that is around the 6 to 1, potentially even more reward to risk ratio, considering we can break to new all-time highs if we do see further demand for these cocktail makers in the market, right? So keep this area in mind for biotech stock chart. Now let's head into the chart of Pfizer. And heading into the chart of Pfizer, we do see less volatility in the company, right? Considering that it does have a lot of diversified pharmaceuticals. So really with demand waning on a potential cocktail, that really isn't going to affect Pfizer stock as much as we do see it affect BioNTech stock. Now on the daily time frame, we did get rejected by these previous levels. As you guys see, we consolidated at this point again, but we did break above and acted more bullish. Now Pfizer did recently close this price cap that we did have where we did trend around 6% up in one day. And of course, Pfizer isn't really as volatile of a stock, but it is important to note that this trading action is pretty bearish. We did kind of pop up today on the day. We were up around 1% to 2%, right? But we're clearly losing steam and closing near our previous open of yesterday's price action around the $51 mark. This can be considered potentially a bearish engulfing candle because we are engulfing the yesterday's previous trading action, right? So keeping all of these things in mind, you guys have to be a little bit more conservative on Pfizer. Yes, of course, Pfizer long-term can offer decent gains and it is a decent dividend stock, but we are pretty overextended in this huge move that we've seen because we have risen from the $41 mark to the $51 area. And this is a pretty big move and volatile move for Pfizer stock. Because as you guys see over here as well, on the weekly time frame, this really is an area where we got supported by that 50 exponential weekly moving average, right? Which you guys do know that during an uptrend, the 20 and 50 exponential weekly moving averages are really important levels I always like to look at. So this is no different for Pfizer stock as well. So if Pfizer does start breaking and closing under that $49 mark, guys, I do think we retest much further down back to the 20 exponential weekly moving average at least because when stocks are extremely overextended, they typically do like to retest to the 20 exponential weekly moving average before getting supported and potentially continuing their uptrend. But it is also possible we do see a further price decline to that $41 mark where this is a pretty decent area of support as well. But that's kind of on a longer term scale. For more short term moves, again, you have to look at a price close under that $49.72 mark and that can signify our further price decline to this $46 area where we might get supported. So guys, let me know in the comment section if you're buying Pfizer and BioNTech stock and click that like and subscribe button for more stock market videos. Thank you guys for watching and have a great one.